You know, Mr. Sams? Yeah, I hear a bell ringing. Is yeah. that just in my ears, or is that... I think it's because you're just deranged. you got some problems in your I don't belt? know. The voices are telling me there's a bell going off, so I'm just taking you a know, I'm it. hungry. Oh, yeah? You're hungry? Yeah, I've been thinking about getting some chips and some guacamole. Uh, oh, old really jokes. Yeah, yeah, what do you think? Horrible. Yeah. You know what? I, you, do you know why I moved up here to the mountains? I, I don't know why you moved well, to the mountains. Well, I, I did it because I don't have to worry about my, my lawn. Why not? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, have to about my lawn either. Now I don't have to maintain my lawn mole or... Oh, oh that's uh, good. Uh, that's, 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 that's actually that's not so good, actually. Dumb. I know. You know, um, uh, today we're going to be doing a lot of uh, mathematics in our Yes, assignments. we are. And so we're going to be working with some multiplication. Multiplication. We have students in here giving us this uh, Is that a good joke or what? Right hey, today now. we're going to talk about titrations. And actually, before we get into too much titrational discussions... Oh, did you guys see this? This is so Isn't cool. Yay. Yeah, Sam's versus Bergman. There's, of course, the tall guy with, uh, he never shaves. He never shaves. And Once a week, whether any of them guy right here who's about to set him on fire. But, of course, he's going to add cesium to water, and I'm going to add thermite. I think a thermite beats. I don't know. We're, I think we're both going to blow each other up. It's, it's not going to be a pretty scene, no. is it? Not at all. Hey, do you know where uh, King keeps his armies? I don't know where King keeps his armies. In his sleeveys. In his Sleeveys. His army. Army arm in the sleeve. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right, I am very slow. Don't you love bad pun jokes? Okay. So we hey, should probably get started here. We probably should because okay. we've just taken a minute of your time. We did. Okay. <laughs> um, adding strong acids and bases to solutions. All yeah. Right. Now, when we add them together, this is called actually a titration. A titration, yeah. You did some of these in regular chem and in your big gigantic project. You did some titration as well. We've got the fancy Bior Rec. And you have the burette, and you add chemicals to the burette. Yep. And that's how we kind of do that. But we want to know um, when you've reached the equivalence point. Yes. And uh, what's that? What happens at the equivalence point? Well, that's when the moles of the acid. The moles of acid. acid. No bad joke there either. Just moles. Just moles. And equals the moles of base. That's right. So we're looking for the equivalence point. Equivalence. Equal point, right? The equal point. So that's the equivalence point. And that's when the, something's equal. Right. And in our case, what we care about is when the moles of the acid are equal to the moles of the base. Right. Okay. Now, there are two ways that you can tell if you've reached the equivalence point. Yeah, the, the first, first, one, first way you've already done, and that's using an acid-base indicator, usually you're going to see a color change of some sort. So the indicator, there would be a color change. Mm -hmm. The most common, one, most common one we use is phenolphthalein. So there's two you should know. There's phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is P -H -E -N -O -L. Phenol, P -H -T -H -A -L -A -L -E -N. phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is uh, uh, it's pink in, in a, a base, base, and it's clear in an acid. These are just uh, good things to know. And then, of course, a bromothymol blue. BTB. Uh, it is a blue in a base. Ba 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 ba, and it is a yellow in an acid. Okay. Now. So you're looking for some variety of color change. Yep. The other way is to actually chart the pH um, with something called a pH meter. You've had experience with that. Yep. If you have it out in the internet, it land. It's just a device that measures pH. Yeah. And you measure the volume a little bit at a time, and you record the pH, and you're looking for the what? You're looking for the steep part of the curve where it makes a big, gigantic jump in pH, going from very low to very high or very high to very low, depending on which direction you're titrating. And so it's the center of the steepest yep, part of the, the graph. Yep, the middle of the so steep So what part. you're actually looking for down here, this one looks like it's about 35 milliliters mm -hmm. on this particular graph that's in your notes. And this one has a pH of 7 at the equivalence point. It isn't always a pH of 7, and no. we will learn about that quite shortly. All right, yep. folks, you need to get out your calculators mm -hmm. because we will be doing lots of problems, problem, problem, problem. Now, you're going to watch us, and we're going to do the problems, but I really think it's good that you solve the problems with your own calculator at the same time yep. and check that Mr. Sams is doing his work right. That's right. I do make mistakes periodically. He occasionally makes mistakes. Yeah, I get a little distracted. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a... Uh, uh, a boatload of problems. All right, yeah. what is the pH when 20 milliliters of 0.25 molars hydrochloric acid reacts with 0.35 molars of sodium nitrite? Nit okay. Now, first of all, what I want to realize is I've got HCl. Now, actually, let's back up for a second. This is very important to note is that whenever you do, it's all about the reactions. If you get the reactions down, the math is easy. Mm -hmm. All right, here's my rule. Acid, write this down somewhere on your notes. Acid plus base, always. Rule number one. Acids react with bases. Acids do not react with more acids. More acids. The second thing, second rule is partners. P 
Part. P-A-R-T-N. I, I got an extra E in there. Smart partners, science teachers. Partners always where? On opposite sides of the arrow. Opposite sides of the arrow. In the reaction, product the chemical reaction. reaction. So one partner here, one partner here. What do I mean by a partner, Mr. Sands? Uh, it's a, like a weak acid and its conjugate. All things right. that are only different by a hydrogen ion. Okay, so now let's think of this. We have HCl. Mm -hmm. All right, Pretty. HCl. I can't write today. And we have sodium nitrite. Mm -hmm. So NaNO2. Now, we need to look at these. We are not going to just do that. That's no. wrong. So what I need to do is I need to go, okay, now what am I going to do? Right. We're looking for things. What yeah. what makes something acidic and what makes something basic? So, so this is a what, Mr. That's Sanders? a strong acid. So all we really care about there is an H+. plus. So all you care about is the H positive from this guy right here. Yeah. Okay. And then from the NaNO2. Yep. That is a, is? well, NO2 is the conjugate of a weak acid. So it's the conjugate base of a weak acid. So who do we not care about? We don't care about sodium there. So we care about the nitrite. Now, yeah. what's the form of the nitrite? That's NO2 with a minus one charge. Unless it's had the minus one charge. Now, is this is an acid, uh -huh. and this is a base. Yeah. We can mix the acid with the base. We well, can. So our reaction is simply H positive plus NO2 negative makes HNO2. Yep. Now what we can do is we can uh, do an ice table. Or it's actually more of a BC. Yeah, this one y you got to do uh, a table. Yeah, right. you got to do your stoichiometry first, and then you do your equilibrium. Let okay. me say that again. You do your stoichiometry first, and then you do your equilibrium. So like first, you do the stoichiometry first. Equilibrium second, and then you do the equilibrium. Is, you don't do the equilibrium. No, first? no, I'm, I'm pretty sure you do the stoichiometry first. Always, always. Okay, and then. You do the what do you mean by the stoic first? Well, we're, we're adding acids and bases, and they're going to react with each other first. And then, if you notice our product, our product there is a weak acid. Weak acids have to do some equilibrium stuff whenever you throw them in water. So, first you react your reactants to make your product, and then that product does this little equilibrium thing. Okay, and so you'll, you'll, see, you'll what see what we mean by this. Is yeah. Now, first of all, we can now work with millimoles. So if we go back Yay. to our problem, we have um, a particular variety, 20 yep. milliliters of 0.25 mm -hmm. mole. So, of course, you've got to remember this is very important. M times V is mole. Yep, and that gives you, us... You can sorry. take them and multiply them. You get them both. So 20 times 0.25, so that's the H positive, is what, Mr. Sanders? That is 5 millimoles. 5 millimoles. And if we do the nitrite, we it go back... 20 times 0.35, which is 7 millimoles. So we've got 5 and we've got 7. Now, I can quickly do this. It's not terribly hard. I'm sure. going to run out of, uh, looks like H, yep. minus 5. There'll be none of this. Right. Since we're titrating to an endpoint, we're always going to use one of these up. Now, how much nitric acid did I have at the beginning? Uh, none. I had none, because right, we did not have yep. any nitric acid. Nope. And this will be then plus 5, five and that's 5. Okay. Now. So now we've done the stoichiometry. We now those are millimoles. We have amounts. We have 5 and 2 mm -hmm. of, oh, wait, Mr. Sams, NO2 negative mm -hmm. and HNO2 are... Those are partners. Partners. Oh, yes, that's right. Hey, guess what? Those are acid-base partners. So we can, uh, and guess what? We have a significant quantity of Yes, we do. Of each. So that means we can use the... David Hasselhoff equation. David Hasselhoff. Henderson Hasselbach Henderson equation. Henderson Hasselbach yeah, equation. Yeah, uh, Hasselbach. Hasselbach. Yes. Whatever his name is. Okay. Well, what is that equation? It's been a couple of days since yeah. we probably saw that, folks. It's so pH, pH equals pKa mm -hmm. plus the log of the base over the acid. Now, yep. we do need to find the pKa. And I need to grab a textbook and so look So, first of all, we need to know the Ka. The Ka of HNO2 from the book in, or the table in the back of your book. It's coming. Page A24. You are in the right page, look at that. Mr. Hey, Sims. I finally figured out where it was. Uh, HNO2 at the top. 4.0 times 10 to the 4. negative 4. 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4. So if I were to take the pKa, that would be the negative log mm -hmm. of 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4, and that would be 3 point something. 3.40. Right? 3.40. So I can just say the pH will be equal to 3.40 plus the log of the base over the acid. Now yep. remember a very cool thing we learned last time is that if we have millimoles and you have a buffer problem, it is the same you can use the millimoles. Yep. Now, the acid, of course, is HNO2, and the base is the NO2 negative. The acid will always have the extra H, ladies and gentlemen. So this will be the base over the acid, so it's 2 over 5, right? Mm -hmm. So log of 2 over 5, we just then say, and that Plug equals... Plug it in, what? you get 3.00. 3.00, wow. A perfect pH. 
Okay. Nice, nice. Okay, that was the first example. We'll try and cover these next ones a tad faster. Yeah. Okay, now we have a different situation. Yes. All right, we've got the nitric acid, and we have... Notice, first of all, I am ignoring the numbers. That there's yes. 15 milliliters, and I'm going to worry about all those numbers later. And I've got this thing, and I've got this thing. Now, this looks a little confusing, but this is your acid because it's got H's in a couple of places. And this is the salt of that. So let's kind of, um, Mr. Sam, one thing I know that you like to do yep. is let's ask ourselves, what is in the beaker? Let's get into the beaker. Put on your little scuba suit, shrink yourself down, jump in the beaker. It's like uh, being in Mrs. Frizzle's class where yes. you could shrink yourself in the magic school bus. School bus. So down. we have nitric acid. I'm going to put that on the outside here yep. for a moment. But when we write nitric acid in the beaker, what do we really have? H plus. We have H positive and, and NO3 minus. NO3 minus, okay. And our second chemical is this HCO2H. Yep. HCO2H. That is a weak acid, and mm -hmm. so it stays together, and that's just that. Yep. And our third thing was the Na... CO2H. CO2H. H. And so this is a sodium compound, so the sodium, of course, dissociates. So we have sodium ions, and we have NO2H, negative, right, because it dissociates. CO2H. All right, sorry, CO2H, my bad. Yep. Okay, so now let's decide who reacts with who? Uh, the acid reacts with, with the base. With the base. So we've got to find an acid, okay. Now let's identify. This H positive is a strong acid, right? Yep. And this right here is a weak, acid. a weak acid. So we can't obviously react those together. Nope, they will not react. And then we have the nitrate and the sodium. What are we going to do with those? Is ignore them. They're spectator ions. They're spectators. They're not important in this whole uh, thing. And the third thing that we care about that is, is we have a weak base. Conjugate base of a, a weak acid. Conjugate yeah, so base of this weak, weak acid. Yep. So this is a weak base. So who's going to react with who? The strong acid is going to react with the weak base. Now, why why wouldn't the weak acid react with They're this partners. One? Partners do not react with each they other. They show up on sides. opposite so sides. So these will react together. Yeah. So the reaction, folks, is going to be H positive plus CO2H negative makes C H H C O two H. I got yeah. it. Now we can do our B B C A. C A. Because we do the stoichiometry table. first. That's our. Now we've done the reaction first. Now yep. we're going to do the stoichiometry first. Now we have to go figure out our how much of each have we got. Now right. we've got quite a bit of chemicals here, yep. all over the place here. I've got 15 milliliters mm -hmm. of 0.2 molar. So 15 times 0.20 would be the nitric acid yep. or the H positive, and that's going to be how many? Three millimoles. I got three of those, and then I go back to this one and I say, all right, how much of the buffer? 50 milliliters. Yep of 0.25, so 50 times 0.25, was that the acid or that the... Uh, uh, that was the acid. Of the acid. Yep. Is what? Is 12.5. Uh, 12 and a half. And then the sodium uh -huh. CO2H... Is 50 times 0.3, which is 15. So 15. So guess what? We have numbers. Who's so, going to run out of first? Uh, well, Looks like the hydrogen. Yeah, we're going to run out of the hydrogen first. Hydrogen place. right there. Yep. So that'll be minus 0.3. Or minus, not 0.3, pardon me. Minus 3. Minus 3.0. There's not, nothing there. This will be minus 3, and this will be plus 3. So that, of course, is 0. Uh, looks like a 12 to mm -hmm. me. And that looks like a 15 and a half. Guess what, Mr. Sams? Mm. We have... A buffer. We do have a buffer. And because we have significant quantities, we, we can have 12 of one and 15 and a half of the other. Yes. So we can use Mr. Henderson Hasselbach. Yes, equation. we can. So we can say pH equals the uh, pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Now, this is a different chemical, so yep. the Ka of this acid of HCO2H is formic from acid. the table is formic acid. It's yeah. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4th. We take the negative log of that, the pKa is equal to, Mr. Sams is furiously typing this in his calculator. Yeah, the pKa is 3.74. 3.74. And then plus the log. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. So yeah. you would say equals 3.74 plus the log of the base over the acid. Now, yep. which one is the base? Let's go back for just a moment and take a look. The base is this guy, the CO2H, yep. and then this is the acid. So it'll be 12 over 15.5, so that's 12 over 15 and a half, and then you do the math. You get 3.63. 3.63. Nice. Okay, let's move on to problem six. Yeah. Now we have a strong base and a buffer. All right, it's just the same thing. We just got to exactly identify... Exactly the same thing. Look, at the same buffer solution. Oh, that was nice of me, wasn't it? It was. Okay. All right, what have I got here? Right, I've got some sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to draw my beaker. Let's all draw a beaker. All right, sodium and hydroxide. I break it apart because it's a natural What? 
Your beaker. That does not look like a drum. That is a beaker. Um, they told... I'll shut up. Okay. Okay, and we still have the H, CO2H, and then we have the sodium and the CO2H negative. So now, let's identify who we can ignore. I think it's pretty obvious. Uh-huh. Nah! Sodium goes away. So now we've got... Um, We've got the hydroxide, which is a strong base. Yep. I have the acid, which is a weak acid, and I have his partner, which has to be a weak base. Yep. So whom is going to react with whom? Strong base. Strong base with weak, weak acid. acid. So these guys are going to react together. So let's write this out. So you'll say hydroxide plus HCO2H arrow. Now the partner, uh -huh. I think it's probably easier to say the hydrogen is going to get the hydroxide yeah. and just makes wow. water, HOH, plus CO2H negative. Yes. Now we do our BCA, BCA and our quantities are, are we have uh, 15, the MV mole thing. Yeah, 15 milliliters times 0.2, uh, so we have uh, 3 millimoles of the hydroxides. 3, I think they're the same amount. Uh, the they are, one. yeah. So 12 or something? Yeah, uh, 12 and a half of, of which the one? acid. 12.5 of this guy. Yep. And then what 15, was it? 15, wasn't it? Uh, 1.5, yeah. 1.5? Or 15. You're right. Sorry. So oh, yeah. yeah. One, 15. You're okay. Right. I'm sorry. I missed a decimal in my calculator. Minus 3. Zero. Minus 3. Uh, that'd be uh, 8. Nine and, Nine and a half. And then plus 3. We're at 18. Yep. Guess what we have? We have a buffer. a buffer. And we can use the same uh, equation because, of course, it's the same buffer of, the, of formic acid and its partner. So we're going to use this 3.74. Yep. So the pH will be equal to 3.74 plus the log of the base. Now, again, the base is the 18 number, and then the acid is the 9.5. So I say 18 over 9.5. And that just comes out to 4.02. 4.02. That's it. Not not hard. Uh, there is an alternative way to solve these, by the way, guys. Let me just quickly show you. We're not going to do it. But if you, of course, what you could then do is you could take your HCO2H, dissociate into H positive plus CO2. Alternate meaning plus HCO2. The other you um, didn't want to use Henderson Hasselbach. If you didn't want to use Henderson Hasselbach, what you would do. This is a pain in the butt. Frankly, it is. Um, is the uh, HCO2H was 9.5, but you actually have to work in molarity. So you take 9.5 divided by the total volume. Total volume. And then you would take, uh, we're not going to actually solve it. No. And take 18 over total volume, and this will be zero. You would say minus X, your, your value from the you know, molarity, minus X, and this will be plus X, X, and this will be your, this number, you know, this will be plus X. It'll be uh, another number called a square plus x, and then you would say the Ka equals, and you would say x times I'll call it square plus x in parentheses over circle minus x. You solve for x, find the hydrogen concentration, take the negative log of that, and you get your answer. And yep. guess what you'd get? 4.02. For something the same pretty answer. darn close. So if you have a buffer, you do not want to deal with that right now. No, it's just use in the butt. Okay. David Number Hussle. seven. David Hassel, it's Henderson Hasselbuck. Henderson. Get it right now. Sorry. Okay. Strong base and weak base buffer solution. All right. So other examples. There's just right. a myriad of examples. All right. So let's go back to my beaker. Beaker. My beaker. All right. What have we got? We've got sodium hydroxide. So we've got Na positive and OH negative. And we have this ethyl Ethylamine. That's just a weak base. C2H5. Yeah, it's one of those ammonia NH2. type things. It's got that N in there, yep. right? And then this one is a little confusing. It's ethyl ammonium chloride. So yep. that'll be C2H5NH3 Plus. positive and chloride negative. Yep. Who gets to go bye bye? Sodium and chloride. So we have now here hydroxide, which is a strong, strong base. base. This, of course, is a weak base. weak base, and then last one is weak a weak acid. acid. So you're going to take your strong base and react it with your weak acid. So our reaction will be hydroxide, OH negative, plus uh, CH... What is uh, it again? C, uh, sorry, uh, C2H5NH3 plus. C2H5. No, no. 2H5. NH3 positive. Yep. That's right. Okay. Make C2H5NH2 plus water. 
All right, we'll okay. do our B, C, A. Now yep. we do our so M we get our, times V yep. equals moles for each problem. We got 40 problems. milliliters and 0.25 molar sodium hydroxide, so, so it's 10 millimoles of hydroxide. 10 millimoles. All right, C2H5 and H3. We'll do M, V. Yep, uh, C2H5 and H3, that's uh, 40 millimoles of that one and 40 millimoles of the other one. 100 milliliters times the, the water. 0.4. So we'll yep. subtract 10. Yep. Zero plus 10. No, oh, pardon me. Minus 10. I was checking your... Yeah, I know. I 30 plus 10, 50. So we got 30 and 50. Guess what we've got? Buffer. We have a buffer. Now, this is a little bit tricky. Is Here. it still pH equals pKa, A plus the log of the base over the acid? But yep. if you were to go in the back of your book, yeah, you, get you a would K find that the KB B. of C2H5NH2 is equal to... 5.6. 5.6. Times 10 to the negative 4. So you have to look that up in the back of your book. So we need to find the, um, I would actually find the PKB, Mr. Sams, or I don't know, there's a number of ways to get this. Yeah. Oh, I just took 1 times 10 to the negative 14. All right. So the KA would be 10, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Which is KW. Divided by the KB, number. which of course is this number. Right. Equals. 1.79 times 10 to the negative 11. And if you then take the negative log of that. Yep of the Ka, that gives you the pKa, which yep, is 10.75. 10 so now I'm going to use my equation, pH would be equal to 10.75 plus the log of the base over the acid. So let's go back and figure out who's the base and who's the acid again. The base, of course, is the one without the charge. So he's the 50. He's the base. That makes him the acid. So it'll be yep. 50 over 30, right? 50 over 30. Yep. And those are within a fraction of, uh, or a factor of 10 of each other. And so pH is what? 10.97. 10.97. Okay. All right. We're getting there. All right. All right. Now let's do a different one. We have sodium hydroxide. Big beaker here. I'll just do a square. We've got sodiums. We've got hydroxides. I dissociate that, right? And then I have propanoic acid. Mm -hmm. I've got HC3H5. O2. I only have two things, don't I, Mr. Sam? Looks like it. I mean, well, there's three, but I can ignore the... Sodium. Sodium. All right, so obviously this is a base, strong base, and this is a weak acid. So I'm just going to react those together, and I'm going to say OH negative plus H... Which one is this? Uh, propanoic acid. H C3 H5 H5 O2. C3H5 O2. And that's going to make water, and his partner, remember, partner's on opposite side, C3... H5O2 Minus. negative. And then we'll do our BCA. Yep. Now, how many millimoles of hydroxide? If we go we back... We have 10. It's 40 milliliters times 0.25 molar. For so this 10 is millimoles. 10 millimoles. And then we have 20 milliliters of 0.5 molar, which is also 10 oh, millimoles. Oh, 10 millimoles. Okay, this is interesting. How much of this do we have? Um, none. None. Okay, so this will be minus 10, mm -hmm. 0. Minus 10, 0. Plus 10, 10. Yay, oh. we have a buffer. No. Wait a second. Can we buffer? Don't have a buffer. Do we have partners? We have zero of our mm, propanoic yeah. acid, and we have 10 of our propanoate. Propanoate, yeah. Propanoate or propanate? Uh, I think it's propanoate. Okay, whatever. Close enough. Sounds All right. kind of fun. Banana fan Now, guess what? We cannot do no cannot do Henderson, Henderson Hasselbach. Hasselbach. So now we need to take this amount and we need to write a new reaction. And yes. the reaction, of course, is when in doubt, you always react something with water. So I'm going to react with water. Now, I'm going to write HOH. You will see here, double arrow. Because this is the equilibrium step. We've done our stoichiometry. Now we're going to do equilibrium. Now we do the equilibrium. Henderson Hasselbach is doing equilibrium. Right. Shortcut. It's just the easy way. Yeah. So now I'm going to say HC3H5O2. See, this hydrogen connects here, makes his partner, right? Yep plus hydroxide. Yep. Now, we have a particular... Now, this is an ice table. It's yes. not a BCA table. No. Now, when can we use millimoles, Mr. Sams? When we're doing the BCA table and in henderson Hasselbach. Yes, you can use it in henderson Hasselbach. You so cannot what, use them in an ice table. You must use what? We must use concentration. So we must work in concentration. So if I go back here, I had 10 millimoles. Yep. So 10 millimoles divided by the total milliliters. Total volume. We had 40 milliliters of the base and 20 milliliters of the acid for a total of 60 milliliters. So 20 and 40. Mixed, these were mixed together. Yes. This is um, 60 milliliters. Mm -hmm. So 10, 10, 10 over 60 yeah. is what? Point one six 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 repeating. There you go. 0.167 molar. That will be my beginning amount, 0 0.167. And no guess way. what? We've done a problem just like that. Did you that right? Yeah. 
I was just going to say, my son's learning his numbers, and the first time he saw 20, and he was learning, he called it 20-0, because oh. it had an O at the end, so 20 O. You've actually done a problem like this in, in that previous chapter, but basically mm -hmm. you, have, you have the salt of a weak acid, but we've produced it in a reaction, actually. Yes. So it's a little bit different, but not really. The problem mathematics is the same. Now, this right here is not a Ka problem. No, this is This is a hydroxide. So we need to find the K... A of this is from the back of the book. The Ka is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. So if you do the math, the Kb is 7.69 times 10 to the negative 10. So I need to use that in my calculations. I'll say 7.69 times 10 to the minus 10th would be equal to x squared over 0 0.167 minus x. I solve for x. Now, something I, I've noticed on some people's tests, x is actually the hydroxide concentration. I think it's important that you actually write brackets hydroxide. Yeah. So now you use your solver. Mr. Sams is furiously doing the solver game. And he's solving for x. And x is? 1.13 times 10 to the negative 5. So now what we can do is take, and that's molarity, yep. the molar, you would take the negative log of that and you would get the pOH, which is the negative log of this number here. 4.95. 4.95. And of course, um, pH 9 plus pOH oh, is 14. Yes. So then therefore the pH 14 minus 4.95, I'm not going to write it down, is? 9.05. 9.05. And actually, let's talk about this particular number. What is this particular thing called when you have, when you run out of every? Thing. Yeah, here it is. Yep. This is the screen I want. You have zero here and zero here. This is technically called the at the equivalence, equivalence point. point. And what is the pH at the equivalence point? Nine. It's not seven. Right. Um, because of the presence of the pro panoate, panoate uh, ion or propanate ion. I want to call. I've always called it propanate. Oh, oh well, that's okay. Because we have this propanate, propanol, whatever, this ion right here, this guy, and since he is a weak base, the conjugate base of the weak acid, propanoic acid, then it's basic at the equivalence yeah. point. So, and the pH is uh, higher than seven; it's nine. Yeah. So it totally makes sense. I yep. think we've got a couple more to do. Don't we? we do. All right, we'll be done here soon. Got four more. Four Five more. Have mercy. I know. What are we thinking? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is such a good thing. If you understand this, you are so set to do any acid-base problem. Okay, what have I got? I've got sodium hydroxide, so Na positive and OH negative. What's BEP? No, oh, I know what that means. No, Never mind. No, yeah. And then we've got <laughs> a H for us. C3H. It is a 5O2. <laughs> These are the exact same chemicals. So the exact same equation is going to apply. We just have different quantities we have of them. different quantities. So we have hydroxide plus H C3H5O2. Same exact reaction makes water plus C3H5O2 minus. Now, when I do my B... C A table. Mm -hmm. What are my numbers, Mr. Uh, we've got 42 milliliters of the base at 0.25 molar, so that's 10.5 millimolar. I believe this one's still 10. And then that right? one is uh, 10. It's still 10, yes. And there's zero. So we'll go minus 10, 0.5, minus 10, 0, plus 10, 10. Now, hmm. this is an interesting, situa interesting is situation. Uh, interesting situation. It's not a buffer. Talk. It's not a buffer. Now, you no. see, we've got two things, Mr. Sam. We do. We have a base and a base. Oh, you see, this is a strong, strong base. Strong base. And this is a weak, weak base. base. In which case, the strong base wins. wins. So We don't is, care about the weak base. In this case, there's no equilibrium. You no. just will take the concentration of the hydroxide will be equal to 0 0.5 millimoles Divided by the total volume. Now, what are our two volumes? Oh, the total volume. We had 42 and 20, so divided by 62. 42 and 20, so this is 60 milliliters. So when you get this, the molarity Point is... 0.00806. 00806 molar. That's the concentration of hydroxide. If yes. you take the negative log of that, yep. you get the pOH, and that would be what? 2.09. 2.09. Subtract that from 14. 11.90. 11.91. 91. Okay, so that's the answer. You ignore this. Yep. This is unimportant. No importante. Not at all. You just do the 11.91, or just the, the, the excess strong base. So if you have excess strong base, you just say 11. Point, you know, do the math here to get this number, take negative log, and you're basically 
basically, basically are. Oh, that done. goes with our lovely pun. Oh, basically done. Yes, okay. Mm. But you get it base. Now, one thing I want to warn you guys is that we are really hammering through these problems very quickly. Yep. You probably need to pause this video occasionally and say, yeah. what did he do? Back us up and then make sure you follow along. It's critical that we understand this. Yeah. All right, this podcast is getting long, so what Mr. Sams and I are going to do is we're going to pause, or we're, gonna, we're just going to have a 15.2A uh, and a 15.2B. And so yeah. we will, you'll need to watch them both. I must yep. confess, I'm sorry. Um, so you need to find the 15.2B, but we're running out of time, and our class is about to walk in, and so we want to make sure that uh, yeah. we can't do it while class is going on. So... Um, We'll see you back on B in just a moment. Bye. All right.